Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we're taking a little review of this Testo 760-3 True RMS Multimeter. This is from Testo. It matches the clamp meter that I reviewed previously. Uh, and as with the clamp meter, it's in a family of three. Um, so that has the 760-1 is the base level meter. 760-2 is the next one and 760-3, this one here, is the top of the range meter, same as this clamp meter is the top of the range clamp meter that they do. As with this, it also does have a unique feature that we'll get into, same as the, this has a unique feature that you don't see on other clamp meters. And like this, it comes with a minimal set of contents really. Pretty much the same as you do get with the clamp meter. You get the meter itself, uh, set of test leads. These are with the probes formed onto the end of the lead, so you can't remove them. You don't get any accessories to go onto the end of the tips, uh, but you do get uh, GS38 or Cat3, Cat4 guards that go over and protect the tip. The problem with that, of course, is that you will then struggle to get into terminals, uh, which we'll have a look at uh, in a later part of the video. Uh, that's those there. You then get uh, the second uh, cover, and then you get these little um, covers for the uh, inlet sockets here that you can, if I guess you're just using it on voltage, you can put these two in here, uh, and then that protects you from putting a voltage probe into the current probe. Uh, and vice versa should you want to and I guess it does give them some sort of moisture ingress protection but I'm not sure whether that's stated anywhere um, you do get four uh, no point in putting uh, all four in so presumably they're giving you some spares as well and then along with that you get this uh, little certificate of inspection uh, to state that it's been calibrated but there's no details on the calibration whatsoever uh, you also get a little quick start and you get the full manual as well. All of that comes in a little cardboard box that you see there. Um, you can see at the back here I do have another uh, case for this, uh, the case that Testo do do for it, but that does not come with the instrument. You have to buy that as an extra. There's a number of Testo uh, accessories available, you do get crop clips that go on the end of these, you can get uh, four millimeter leads with uh, four millimeter connectors at both ends of the lead and then a set of crop clips and probes uh, and you get the case. You also get the thermocouple adapter to go in this as well to measure temperature, whilst it can do it, you need their specialist thermocouple adapter, you can't plug a standard thermocouple into this, it just won't work. Um, and then the case is the final accessory and all the accessories are really a quite high price from the tester um, in comparison to what you can get from other manufacturers in the market. Um, for this instrument here, the case is quite large, and easy, plenty of room, and then you can put the leads uh, wherever you want to really. And what you can't do, however, is get the instruction manuals in with it. Um, see there hopefully that it's just too big to go in to this case so you can't keep them with the instrument should you want to um, but uh, there's plenty of space for other accessories and bits and pieces in the case that you can get from Testo itself uh, so him out of the way so just before we do some measurements on the instrument we can look at the actual access into terminals for an industrial electrician uh, that's uh, a job that we do regularly with our probe tip there. You can see I've got no chance of getting into any of the smaller terminals there. 2.5s, they're 4s. Uh, this one here is a, uh, this is a 10, yeah, that's a 10. So you can't get in with that really. Uh, you can obviously get in all of them with the guard removed, but that defeats the GS38 protection, which is kind of frowned upon. Uh, and these aren't fused test leads either, so there is no protection within these leads should you make an error. Um, put it there. Switch them on, you've got the center button here, and it switches on. And the meter defaults to whatever you've got the probes into, so 
Uh, we're in voltage at the moment. You see it's defaulted to AC volts. Um, to change that, you can cycle through the bottom here. There's your DC volts. And then cycle back again. There's your AC volts, and you do get frequency up in the top there. You can just switch on our DMM check plus. And we can do some measurements with you, which is the voltage there. So voltage wise, we can measure from 0.1 millivolts to 1000 volts. That's both AC and DC. Uh, for AC, we are 1% plus three digits. And for DC, we are 0.8% plus three digits. So our DMM check plus here should be reading five volts AC. So that should be 4.947 to 5.053 volts. We should get on this. And then we are 4.987989. So we are within tolerance. Frequency is smack on 50 hertz at the top there. Now just do a quick flick over. This should be one kilohertz now. Uh, which you can see 1.00 kilohertz at the top there, but our voltage measurement has dropped 4.764 volts. Uh, let's flip them over to DC and this does auto change, so we are 5.0 smack on 5.000 volts DC. Uh, for DC, that should have been between 4.957 and 5.043. Uh, for that, so there's no problems with the accuracy on that aspect of it. Uh, now, to change over to currents is one of the unique features that this instrument has. Take this over. If I try to change to current now, it doesn't know where the leads are, so it tells you, No, I'm not going to let you do that. And change into the milliamps there, and it automatically changes over to current. If I go to the 10 amp, it automatically changes over to the current there. If I try to go back to voltage now, on uh, again, it won't let me with the lead placed in there. I have to remove the lead. It doesn't really know where it is, so it always defaults to AC. And then we'll go back to milliamps, and we are set to DC, aren't we? So this should be one milliamp, and we should be 0.93 to 1.07 milliamps on measurement on this. And we are 1 1.02, 1 1.01, 1 1.02 there, so that is all good. Uh, AC current wise, let's flick it back over. And for, for our whole current, so current we are 0 0.1 microamps to 10 amps, again, both AC and DC and they have the same tolerance as one another uh, so it's quite slow in auto if it goes at all Ooh, I don't like it let's change manually to AC and we are 1.02 with that the accuracy on current is the same for AC and DC which is 1.5% plus five digits so all is good with that one, uh, we can turn him off again, um, and that's our basic AC uh, and DC voltage and current measurement. We can flip him back over to our voltage, and we can look at the resistance, capacitance, and diode. Uh, we've got some LEDs and diodes again. With our change in our function, we use this button now to cycle through them. And we go to our Continuity there, so pretty fast, um, but fairly quiet. Um, they're not always latched, uh, but I guess it's aimed more at electricians, this instrument, so continuity or fast continuity isn't the preferred option for us, really. It's not such a great requirement for electricians as it is in electronics work. Well, let's flip open to our, our resistance. And there's our diode there, so we've got our four LEDs here we can have a look at. Um, there's the red one lit up, and we get voltage there, the green one. Uh, you probably can't see that, but it is lit up quite dim. And we've got a voltage there. Uh, again, our blue one is lit. I can see it lit, but I doubt you guys can. 
uh, 2.4 volts and there's our white one and that's lit up all okay there get some of our normal diodes here uh, our power diodes yeah, we get readings there uh, our zenas our shop gear should be lower 0.2 that's all good and then finally again this the amber one down here as you can't see that all because i put it up there um, it is lighting up but you won't see it on camera and we are getting a voltage measurement there so that's all good um, so those are all clear there whilst we've got it on voltage you can put it alongside another meter i mean this is like my key sight meter so you can see just how small this testo is uh, let's turn the two volts and see what we get voltage wise. Max volt out of the diode test is 2.68 volts. Uh, so, fairly respectable, really, for that. Uh, so, that's all those sorted out. We'll get some capacitance and resistance boxes and we'll have a look to see how it performs on those tests. So for our resistance function here, we can go from 0.1 ohm up to 60 mega ohms with 1.5% plus three digits. And we are set to zero on this. So we are 0.15 ohms on the resistance there. I don't believe, oh, I'll have to check the manual. I don't believe this has any zero function, which is surprising for something that can read 0.1 ohms. That just does the light. Hmm, I'll we'll have to check. Um, I don't believe it has. Uh, but anyway, there's, uh, let's go to 10 ohms. So you can see a bit of the residual still in there, 10.1, 10.2 ohms. And down there, so I can go to uh, one mega ohm there, which is all good. It's got half range, which will be, 30, ooh, caught some other digits there. So that should be 31 mega ohms there, in actual fact. It's 30.93, which is all good. And we got to our 60, uh, probably be on, on 61, so we'll see what we get. We get out of range. Uh, let's go back to 60, see if we can convince it. Yeah, 59.97 mega ohms, 94 mega ohms, 88. Yeah, I've not got the best connection on these jacks here really, but resistance wise it all appears to be in spec. No problems. Uh, let's change over to some capacitance. Uh, some continuity to the diode. There's our capacitance there. So capacitance we are all 0.001 nanofarad up to 60 millifarads. And the accuracy on this does change. We are from 1.5% plus five digits up to 60 millifarads, we are 10% plus 25 digits. So that's typical for capacitance, really. It does change throughout them. We are currently set to one nanofarad. Uh, so we can have a look, see what we get there. 1.22 nanofarad, uh, fairly quick. Uh, let's switch that off. So that's our residual that it's reading, which these decade and boxes do have residual values in them. Uh, straight to 10 microfarads in there, 10.17. Uh, we'll go all the way up to uh, we're 70 there and we are 72.6 so it's creeping out a little bit into it imagine it's still in spec uh, there's 90 microfarads there and it's picking up 93.8 uh, which is likely still within tolerance uh, but there is a bit of movement in there uh, so this is our 4.7 millifarads capacitor we'll see how we respond to it's more interesting to see what the speed is of this really we are pretty quick, aren't we? 4.480 millifarads, so 4.7. Uh, this is a plus or minus 20% capacitor anyway, so that's pretty much well within spec, no problems there, but it is quick to respond to it. So all in all, a pretty good response for its measurement capabilities, really. Um, other functions that this does have, it does have a hold, so we can uh, take our capacitance measurement again, if we can, with one, can't with one hand. Uh, and we can hold the function there and it stays on there, typical of all multimeters really. Uh, we do have a low pass filter 
and we do can change between frequency and duty factor as well when we're in voltage mode uh, it doesn't do anything when we're in capacitance let's go back to voltage so on our IC there we can switch into low pass filter that's for measurement when we're on inverters and harmonics and the like uh, if we have a longer duration press then this will flip over between any frequency and then short press gives me duty factor there uh, which is obviously there's no measurement on there so I can't pick anything up but we do have that function as well and then hold it in again to take it back to our voltage and we do have min max recording as well um, so fairly basic multimeter in that respect so I've been using our little Testo 760-3 here for fault finding on some protection relays I was repairing um, and I've found that if I leave this in auto mode sometimes it behaves itself um, well most of the time it behaves itself it can catch me out a little bit while but it's quite good for going around and tracking components obviously if you want more traces we've got shorts there so we're okay there it goes through to shorts um, when you get an open sometimes it's fully open so there's no continuity there or it switches to capacitance switch to capacitance again but it does go back to values there no problem or the short circuit i should say there um, we do have a 100 microfarad capacitor here across there which we get 96 and all okay and then we flip around and then we get continuity um, so it's flipping between the two ranges quite readily and we get a diode there so we've got 0.546 voltage drop across there i'll just reverse that and you see stayed on diode continuity there uh, let's go back to our diode switch to diode again but now it's open um, so it's pretty good for doing that kind of work with there and I've been reasonably impressed it has caught me out a few times um, switching to the capacitance mode uh, when it's actually open circuit and there is no actual capacitance that you're measuring across um, but that's the only issue I had with doing that really other than that it has worked quite well so there it is, there's our little Testo 760-3 multimeter. Um, fairly good instrument, it seems to be fairly robust. This is mostly all hard plastic. You've got a soft grip on the sides here. Uh, that's the tilt bale. It's fairly good, fairly solid really. Um, press the buttons and it's all good. It seems to stay there for that. And you've got probe holders at the top here for either putting into your probe like that to use uh, for probing around and then the other probe in your hand or you can store probes in there in that manner should you want to. Uh, takes three AAA batteries in there. We do have internal fusing as well, uh, a 10 amp and a 630 milliamp for the lower current range. Um, and that's our little instrument there. Um, for all of this package, um, on the Testo website, you will pick this up for 198 pounds uh, however shopping around um, with other suppliers I can get this for around about 170 pounds so there is a little bit of a saving to be made against the Testo website so that's just a little look at this multimeter I will probably put it into one of my bags um, because I've got this one in my uh, partial discharge uh, bag at this moment in time which is uh, a huge meter to be carrying around for that it's also way over spec for what I need for that work so I'll probably replace that with our little testo unit here and see how I get on with it but that'll be it for this video thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one